The Soul Survivors of Chicago presents Breaking the Silence, a talk show that live is live <laughs> every Thursday from 6 to 6.30 here on Can TV Channel 21. Uh, if this is your first time coming on, we want to thank you for coming. And if this is not, welcome back because today's topic is going to be really great and informational as well. Uh, before we begin and get into my lovely host I want to introduce, I want to talk about something that's really important. Uh, Soul Survivors of Chicago is getting ready to launch our documentary that we produced, a short documentary called While the Children Fade. While the Children Fade is a documentary that was produced by Soul Survivors and it includes us and three other women who have lost their child by way of suicide and tells the story of this impact as well as the disparities with suicide and what's happening in our community. I want to show you a small clip of our trailer and then as we go through the show talk a little bit about how you can get more involved and learn and kind of even watch the documentary as we launch it. So with that, here's the trailer. You know that question people ask, you know where your children are? It's 10 p.m. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? I hear that. And I say, yeah, I always know where my child is. You know, he's in a cemetery. His spirit lives with me, but he's in a cemetery. Everything hard when losing a kid. But suicide is so painful because you're taking your life. You took your life from yourself. I am eight years old. I don't want her to hurt, and I'm thinking like that, my baby. What does she go through? Suicide among black youth is a really serious issue in public health crisis right now, simply because people are dying, and they don't have to die. The part that social media plays, the rates of being bullied, the sense of, I don't belong anywhere, where's my place? That's a lot to deal with as a kid. The hole in your heart, only you feel. Ain't nothing gonna fill it up. So as we get forward to launch our documentary, uh, we want to just keep in touch with you. Uh, we are premiering uh, our first event on June 22nd, and you can buy tickets on Eventbrite, and we'll be sharing more, but always follow us at soulsurvivorsofchicago.com. So without further ado, let's get into our topic today. I have with me a very special guest. This is Mr. William Cole. Mr. William Cole is a Army veteran, a father, and a biomedical engineer with the Department of Veteran Affairs, but he's also my husband. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and I invited him today because he is so insightful as it relates to mental health and prevention. And we wanted to just have a topic regarding mental health within the black community and particularly those who have come through so much adversity. Those of us Many of us have come from very humble beginnings, right? We've all experienced times where we had to go without or go with, and then we've learned from it and build, and then we build our children with it. So William is just a awesome example of how he has come through adversity. So I want to thank you so much, my love. Thank you, honey, for yes. inviting me. Yes, yes. 
So let's go ahead and get started. Um, when you reflect on your life and all the things, and I know it's a lot to think through, what type of advice, let's go with that, that you would give to someone when it comes to wellness and, you know, tackling adversity? Like, what are your, your key things that you do? Um, well, I, for me, I use um, meditation and a lot of uh, physical activity. I, I, I frequent the gym every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, I wind down with some steam, but mostly uh, kind of uh, just stretching and relaxing and, um, you know, doing a lot of pool work. Uh, not anything too strenuous, but just, you know, active, good individual workouts and mindset. So uh, that's how I start the day off. Mm -hmm. And then I can deal with the rest of the challenges of the day that work and life presents, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's how I do it. And I think that it's important uh as far as wellness is concerned because uh, that activity in the morning also gets your juices going and thinking about longevity and what do I need to do to be proactive in my care and paying attention to all of those things as I age as an older black man and some of the mm -hmm. stigma around us not uh, being on top of the health part of it with uh, normal annual um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. care. So I don't want to stretch it out too long, but that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, so what we're talking about is like starting your day with a reset button, coming with it with understanding that I'm going to care for myself first before I get up, take a shower, get dressed, brush my teeth, go to work, come home, do the same thing over. I've learned that that helps. And a lot of times, you know, my practice at the house is to kind of get into biblical things and so forth. But my husband does a great job. And I also, you know, encourage anyone else to be proactive when it comes to mental health and starting your day with yourself versus your task. Because when you start with your day, then your task can fall with you versus your task drive you. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's good to know. When you reflect on some other things, can you share with me about when you speak about, like, saying that that helps generate the juices and so forth. So you understand that caring for yourself makes a difference. Can you share with me something or someone that um, has inspired you to continue that or something that... Um, you know, helps you continue with that regimen. Like, how do you remember to keep going with it? Some people kind of fall off on things and things like that, but why would you say that's something you continue to do? Well, um, I think it's uh, important uh, because I got a wife, I got some kids, I got some grandkids, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are counting on me. Mm -hmm. And so um, mentally and physically, I try to be grounded mm -hmm. every day because each day is different mm -hmm. and obviously with kids and grandkids and a wife, things come up. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think it's important for the kids to see that I'm maintaining my health or at least as, as close as I can. And it's important for my grandsons to see that, hey, Papa is all right and he takes his health very serious. And so without Preaching one thing and doing another, I try to lead by example since I am the elder of the flock, so to speak. Ah, so that's important to see. Yeah, I didn't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. When you are the matriarch or the elder in your family, you're often seen as someone who's the leader. And that could be a lot of pressure, right? It is a lot of pressure. Yeah. yeah. It is a lot of pressure. And so, uh, but the wonderful part is, is that uh, you see the, the 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 jewels on the other side of that pressure, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, when you do have those conversations with those other uh, young adults or adults, they tend to trust what you have to say, mm -hmm. and it's it's really nice because those same adults that are doing very well, they still 
come back to you because they trust what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And so they don't make any major decisions mm -hmm. without talking, mm -hmm. you know, at least drilling down on it. So yeah, it's, it's really good that way. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as having to, having had to learn, mm -hmm. you know, from a young man to the point where I could really give it all back because I could see a better picture now. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. wow. So you got a chance to experience, you know, the importance of self-care. And someone in the previous show said something that was really instrumental that I thought, you never know who's watching you. You never know. And there's absorbing so much from your actions, from your behaviors, from your tasks. And they're b building a perception, right? Right. So you want to also know that what you're doing and taking care of yourself is not only just for you, it's also leading on and bleeding into those that you care for. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So let's change the topic a little bit. Um, I wanted to talk about, because in this show, we talk about breaking the silence and the stigmas related to mental health and wellness and what we've experienced. As you all know, as the host, I lost my son by way of suicide, and I'm very, very passionate about mental health and awareness. And in this process of this loss that we've experienced, we're learning a lot of things. One of the things I always like to ask people is, when you reflect back on your childhood and um, the things that you've been through, what was that person that you were looking at that was your role model? Was it a like television show? Was it something that you saw on the sports? Was it someone in your community? And how did they impact you or family? But how did they impact you to continue to strive forward? Like who would that? Um, I would have to say it was my uh, my dad, my grandfather, and my uncle. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather, of course, because he was the matriarch and he did things the right way. Mm -hmm. um, my dad, because he's my dad, mm -hmm. right, and he just really had a strong hands on um, in trying to make sure that he taught me everything that he could, okay. whether it was. Uh, electronics because he was a navy trained electronics guy oh, okay. so it was yeah. electronics or if it was sports you know he started us out doing push-ups and jumping jacks when we were like five maybe seven and my mother always bought us weights and boxing gloves so um all three of them because they got up every day and went to work because they took education very serious and because every weekend they made sure that we were doing things. No free summers. No free summers. You <laughs> always, you know, you were working. And, of course, we didn't have power tools back then. Everything was manual. Ah, so, you yeah. know, you really got a good, strong work ethic, whether it was mowing or, uh, you know, uh, trimming the bushes or, you know, mm -hmm. all the cutting down the trees. You know, you did it with a real saw, right? Mm. So it was uh, <laughs> the axe and the real saw. So. Yeah. A lot of calluses, a lot of fun, a lot of, at the time, didn't really understand it, but uh, I can appreciate it now uh, because, you know, it, it's always been a, a good life ever since. So, yeah, not yeah. too bad. Wow. So, didn't understand it then, yeah. but so, now it processes to something. Yeah, and my uncle, you know, of course, he, uh, my uncle Sonny, he was a police officer, okay. Chicago police officer, so... He was this real firm, you know, disciplinary in person, and my grandfather was too. So, you know, it was the combination of them three plus my other two uncles as well mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of shaped and molded and gave me some examples of things that we do as cold men and things that we don't do. Mm. So you're speaking about four men that had an impact in your life. All black males, mm -hmm. and they guided you to learn principles, you learn techniques, you learn discipline, you learn, um, you know, care, you learn manual things, all that. As you think about our community and what we're going through right now, what advice would you give to the elder, and it relates to the younger population that they have in their community or their families, that would help them get the lesson that you learned? Yeah. Well... You know, one of the things is, Rafia, we live in a different time. Mm -hmm. uh, during my time, uh, motion was everything. 
right? So whether it was going outside to play softball with everybody in the neighborhood mm -hmm. or uh, somebody saying, uh, go cut the grass, you didn't have anything else to do, so you wanted something to do. Mm -hmm. Whereas this different challenge is, it's digital, and so most of the kids you try to reach with some of that technical stuff because of AI, it offers new challenges to be able to reach them and be active with them because you maybe not don't ha aren't as versed mm -hmm. in this new really fast mm -hmm. world where they're learning everything at their fingertips and so now you have to convince them to trust you and that you really are smart and you don't have to be a computer and they can come to you as a resource okay so, so trust is one right understand that to build a trust with that youngster that you're dealing with to understand, and I just want to break it down because this is really good. So no. <laughs> <laughs> trusting and building a trusting relationship with those so that they can kind of get away from the devices that they can trust to do the things for them automatically. Right. Where it's a process when you do things like cutting the grass. Right. right. Okay. What was the other things that you were going to speak of outside of? Oh, uh, you know, another thing that... Um, while I was mentioning all of that, that I thought about was just in a little short period, say from uh, 2007 up to 2012, we used to have a waiting list mm -hmm. of kids waiting to sign up to be mentored mm -hmm. in our uh, biomedical engineering service. Mm -hmm. And in the last seven years, We've been hard pressed to even find one child. Mm -hmm. And it's an awesome program, but it used to be tons of kids. That was always, but of course they've got STEM in school now and mm -hmm. they're, they're building robots. Mm -hmm. But we used to do that at the medical center all the time. Mm -hmm. And we just don't get the kids signing up anymore. So that's another little bit of a gap that I think an opportunity that uh, is missing because of the digital formats mm -hmm. and that, so it's harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the importance of getting them involved in things like your no free summer kind of piece, right. always involving and in, in, in exposing the children to, to certain things like STEM and, you know, outdoor recreation and then to trust, like you said, to have the trust and build that relationship. So those are good things to think through. I like that. Um, so growing up, I know my husband has told me so many great stories that I just look at. I just am so at all for the things you've seen, been through, survived. I truly am. I'm mm -hmm. saying this publicly, right? <laughs> but I want to know if you could share with the audience today and you're growing up when you were exposed to maybe a trauma that you can feel, you feel comfortable about, the, the things that you um, want people to know about when you're exposed to trauma. For example, how we can safely um, navigate from an experience, whether it's something we've vicariously saw all the way down to being part of, and what your tools would be for them to kind of work through it. For example, seeing someone be hurt, seeing someone being robbed, seeing somebody, uh, you know, lose something. What would be, you know, that experience and how would you share what they should do over there? Then? Okay. So, um, a, a really good experience was unknowingly and unwittingly, uh, um, <clears throat> I went to hang out with some friends, and it was just, you know, uh, teenage boys uh, going to hang out. I didn't, I was unaware of anything that was going to happen uh, that day with that. But I went to hang out with these guys, and we uh, were walking. Uh, we were on 47th in uh, Cottage Grove, i never forget it. Uh, the bus stop was right there. And all of a sudden, uh, three of the uh, three of the five it was five of us not like i said we was just supposed to be going to the park and having fun and three of the f five guys decided to go over to the bus to stop at the bus stop and uh try to snatch this guy's bag mm. 
Well, this guy was uh, a, a security guard that had just gotten off work, and his firearm was in the back. Mm. So that led to a process of probably somebody finding this bag. No, the bag didn't get snatched. The guy, like, grabbed a handle on the gun and was about to shoot uh, one of the guys that was with us. And he took off running. He didn't shoot, but he just let him know and let everybody know that he was a security guard and he had a gun. Mm -hmm. So um, that that was uh, 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 a... be careful who you hang out with and choose your friends and know who you're hanging out with and ask some questions about what the real involvement is so that it doesn't stray off into somebody going over into a bus stop and grabbing a gun and Mm -hmm. then you might get shot or they Mm -hmm. might get hurt. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say, you know, as cliche as it may sound, uh, be very careful about hanging out with people that you don't frequent with all the time you know family members and friends that you can predict and kind of trust and both of y'all got each other back that's different than going over to your auntie's house and hanging out with the next door neighbor and all of a sudden you're in a whole situation where people could lose their lives or be hurt uh from someone thinking that it's an innocent prank and i didn't think that it was all that innocent i never hung out with those guys again by the way but that was a very bad experience Wow. And I can imagine it was a traumatic experience because you can think of all the things you've been through. That's one of the things that imprinted in your head and your mind. And oftentimes when we have those experiences, they never do leave. They just stay in some parts of our brains and we suppress them. But they are always something that we live through. And when we see experiences like in movies or in somebody's, you know, sharing or reading a paper, we can say, I remember something like that. You know, it just all the way pops up and it's like 30 years ago. So it's important to know that your visual eyes and what you see is going to always imprint on you an impression. Because thoughts become things. That's one of the things I do know. As we wrap up, I wanted to ask you um, another question, and this has to do with, like, the stigma of mental health. Mental health is getting a lot of press nowadays. It's a big word, a lot of funding behind it, but it's a scary word because you say mental, then you say health. And people think mental can mean, um, I'll use words like crazy or, you know, not connected and so forth. And we're trying to change the language to understand that this is our command center. And when we have this, this works. If this isn't healthy and this isn't up to par, and all this, because this needs to be. It's a part of everything. And it's a public health piece as well. Mm-hmm. My question to you when it comes to thinking about the stigma of mental health, in your, um, let's say, in your circle of, of friends and, you know, family and things like that, what could you suggest to help silence the stigma? Like, would it be talking about your experiences, uh, what you do for your care? Um, how would you make it an, a, a comfortable conversation with those five gentlemen that you spoke about that were in, that were uh, influential, like mm-hmm. to you? Yeah. Well, uh, with those. Um, five gentlemen, the the, the mm-hmm. guys that I was hanging out with, right? Um, Decision making when you're young is challenging, mm-hmm. and shunning people as friends when you don't really know uh, is challenging too, because you don't want to be shunned either. So um, it can be difficult because this was a person that I really you know, enjoyed hanging out with. We played basketball, football, all kinds of stuff together. But I wasn't able to, as a matter of fact, I never saw him again because, you know, my parents said no more ever and (laughs) plucked me and took me to the suburbs after that. But um, I guess the, the biggest takeaway about the stigma of mental health is that everybody wakes up with some life challenges. Mm. And so we all, at some point of the day, uh, are questioning our capacity to continue or should we let this along and take something a little less, a little easier because it's too hard or difficult. So um, 
Just being a role model. Just being, yeah. A, a, yeah, a mentor, a role model, you know, all of those challenges and having to live your life like you preach it, mm -hmm. uh, they can offer mental health challenges as well, right? You know me, I like to go and plant my flowers outside and play with the dog, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but that's my release yeah, that's from nice. all of the stress of the day, yeah. right? So, you know. Um, so kind of finding, finding your release. Finding your release because you're going to have challenges regardless. Yeah. You know, and hard is not easy. But it's rewarding. Ah, I like that. And with that being said, that's a bomb right there that we mm -hmm. want to drop for your mental. I want to thank you so much for joining us here at Soul Survivors of Chicago, Breaking the Silence. I want to thank my lovely husband for taking the time out to be part of the show today. And I want to thank you for coming. By all means, please join us again, 6 p.m. on CAN TV, Channel 21. Every Thursday, we go live. Follow us at SoulSurvivorsOfChicago.com. And while the children fade, you can find out more information or even email us at www.WhileTheChildrenFade.com. Be well. Take care. Bye-bye.